Hello, I'm David Epworth, and this is my new book, or a proof of my new book, Overpaid, Oversexed, and Over There. It's about British acts in the United States from 1963 to 1983. As you'll appreciate, usually when you've got a new book out, it's customary to go and talk at literary festivals or maybe in bookshops to meet readers, sign copies, and so forth. As you'll appreciate, that's pretty difficult in the current situation and so what I hope to do as a bit of a substitute is using the miracle of this platform to do a series of stories, observations, vignettes about the period covered by the book and also offer those people who want it the opportunity to get a signed copy. Uh, more details of that later on. First, on with the show. <laughs> On November the 29th, 1963, just a week after seeing her husband killed alongside her in Dallas, Texas, Jackie Kennedy sat down with a reporter from Life magazine and she talked about her late husband. And one of the things she talked about, interestingly, was this long playing record, which is the Broadway cast recording of the Lerner and Lowe musical Camelot, which is very popular at the time and was a favourite of John F. Kennedy. He particularly liked the final song, where the refrain is, Never let it be forgot that once there was a plot that for one brief shining moment was known as Camelot. And as a consequence of that interview, the Kennedy, Kennedy era has gone down in history as the lost era of Camelot. It's interesting because this is the kind of entertainment that America probably associated with Britain back in 1963. Beautifully spoken performers like Richard Burton and Julie Andrews and uh, Knights and uh, Tales of, of Merry England and so forth was the kind of thing that they were comfortable with. What they didn't seek at all from Britain was rock and roll in any shape or form, which is odd because on the same day, November the 29th, 1963, this came out in the UK, and that is, of course, I Want to Hold Your Hand by the Beatles, and the crowning achievement of what had been the year of Beatlemania. Beatlemania had not touched the United States in 1963, but it was about to touch it in a very big way in 1964. And at the time John, Kennedy, John and Kennedy was assassinated on November the 22nd, most Americans would not have heard of the Beatles. By the time they arrived in the United States in early February 1964, it seemed that absolutely everybody in the country had heard of them. And this was a lot to do with the massive speeding up of the rate of communication in those days. The assassination of Kennedy is the one event that everybody who was alive at the time remembers exactly where they were when they heard the news of it. The funeral of Kennedy was the biggest gathering of people in front of a television set to witness a live event that had ever taken place on the planet. Nobody thought it would ever be equaled. Of course, it was equaled on February the 9th, 1964, when the Beatles, who'd flown in to an airport which had just been renamed in honour of the dead president, when they played at the Ed Sullivan show, even more people watched that programme. And so you'd had a great gathering for a wake in November and then a great gathering for a party in February. And you can't help think there was some connection between the two. But certainly the British invasion had begun. If you've ordered my book, either online or via your local bookshop, please get in touch with me via the email underneath this and send me your address and I'll be happy to send you a signed, customised book plate that you can put inside it. Thanks very much. <laughs>